And we are back with a Fox News alert. You are looking live at the Gaza border. Hamas expected to release a second wave of Israeli hostages later today. 13 have already been freed, seen here reuniting with their families. But we are still waiting for the release of those three Americans still in Hamas captivity. Abram Accords negotiator and CEO of Rubicon founders Adam Bowler joins us now. Adam, great to see you as always. Look, as such an experienced negotiator in this region, 30,000 foot view, is this the deal that you would have made? I think this is a really tough one, Todd, um, but I would have taken it. The reality is if you can get these people back, you take it. It's gonna be really painful for Israel though. You're gonna see Hamas regroup. They're not allowed to use drones for surveillance. And my biggest concern here is you're going to have world media pushing to extend and extend and extend. And it's not going to be extendable. Joe Biden said he is hopeful that Americans are in the next tranche of hostages release. But I think anybody looking at this, even from a perspective, a commoner's perspective like mine, not even necessarily an experienced negotiator like you, realizes that Hamas is going to hold on to these Americans until the very last moment to extract everything that they can. Am I right? Of course they will. Uh, they're going to use that as leverage because they're a terrorist organization. And I, I heard, you know, the president talking about hopefulness. Um, those aren't the words that I would use. Um, hopefulness is not acceptable. And by the way, three Americans is not acceptable. There are 13. We need all 13. Uh, so I would expect we should be a lot stronger in our negotiations, that this is a no negotiation, no compromise on getting our 13 people back. Um, and so I think in this region, look, we tried it with Iran. We tried appeasement with Iran. That's why we're here today. We tried appeasement in the area. There's no appeasement with Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist organization. There's no appeasement. If we extend the ceasefire and we keep extending and we keep extending and we stop, we are kicking a ball down a road. It's time to take care of that now. By all accounts, yesterday's release went well. At least it seems to the public that can view this from news reports and the like and reports on the ground. I had a guest on my show, Fox and Friends First, who said he was worried that Hamas would use this opportunity to do a really bad act to the hostages during the releasing process. Obviously, we didn't see that yesterday. Unfortunately, hopefully, we won't see that today. Do you share that concern from a negotiation perspective, or, or do you look at that and say that's a horrible take because Hamas wouldn't want to lose the PR uh, battle that they currently have with regard to, hey, look, we're generous, we're releasing hostages. Where do you fall on that? Todd, one thing that Hamas is really good at actually is PR, um, is making people feel bad, uh, making people forget that they are the ones that caused all of this uh, is what you see. And so I think that would be highly unlikely that they would do something like execute hostages because they're much better and much more thoughtful from a PR perspective. I think it would turn the whole world against them. So it would be a very silly thing to do. I highly doubt that's what you see. I think you'll see an efficient transfer. It's in Hamas's best interest right now to make an efficient transfer. It's how they're going to try to turn the world against Israel. Uh, and so they're going to leverage that as much as they can. The thing that I'm struggling right now with Adam as a father is the images. The latest image we just saw from Alex Hogan's piece, the father grasping his two young girls that had just been freed. And I'm a dad of two girls. So I see that and I think this is a beautiful moment. I'm so happy to see this. And here on our screen right now is the little boy running to be with his, his family. But how do we reconcile this with what you mentioned in your earlier answer, the fact that this will hurt Israel and the fight against Hamas from a military and operational perspective? The thing that we need to do is stand steadfast with Israel here. And so when this is done, when these people are home, because I agree with you, Todd, that's why I said in the beginning that I support the deal. It's really hard to have families and children like they still are in tunnels in the ground. It's really hard to have that. We need them out. And if this is the route, if we lose military advantage for a while, Israel can sustain it because Israel's strong. Um, and what we need to do is support Israel when they resume because everyone is going to say not to resume not to resume hostilities, but they need to do that when they need to do that. So what we need to do is be happy that these kids are home, that these elderly people are home, but not forget who did this to them and make sure that they're eradicated. Adam, you are a clear and level-headed voice on this subject. It's no wonder that the Abram Accords worked out as well as they did with you on the case. Adam Bowler, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you, Todd.